Can we go to this video of uh, Savannah Guthrie, obviously colleague of Matt Lauer and uh, the experience that she's undergoing? You know, for the moment, all we can say is that we are heartbroken. I'm heartbroken for Matt, he is my dear, dear friend and my partner, and he is beloved by many, many people here. And I'm heartbroken for the brave colleague who came forward to tell her story and any other women who have their own stories to tell. Mm -hmm. And we are grappling with a dilemma that so many people have faced these past few weeks. How do you reconcile your love for someone with the revelation that they have behaved badly? Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that this reckoning that so many organizations have been going through is important. It's long overdue and it must result in workplaces where all women, all people mm -hmm. feel safe and respected. So look, she's in a super tough spot as a lot of folks have been recently uh, where you work with somebody, you like them and then you find out things about them uh, that are uh, very, very uncomfortable and disconcerting. Yeah, uh, And so, I feel terrible for Savannah Guthrie and Al Roker later was also quite affected by it. And they've worked with this guy for a long time and they never experienced the, the, the door getting locked on them. Yeah. They never experienced the sexual harassment. So to them, he was just a good friend and colleague. And by the way, not everybody had that same experience with Matt Lauer. Yeah. The, the person who was there before Savannah Guthrie. Uh, did felt like he ran an all boys club and they did not get along and that he felt that she pushed her him out, but nothing along these lines, yeah. right? Uh, and and so I, I just always feel bad for the people because, she, like Sarah Silverman said, you know what am I going to do? I, this is terrible. But when she was talking about Louis C.K., yeah. but he's my friend, and I don't yeah, know how to know, resolve you might have that. Known him for years or decades. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I often wonder. Like every every murderer. Has people who know them. I mean, how do you reconcile what you thought about this person who might be a relative of yours or a friend of yours or a coworker of yours with what they've done? And especially, I mean, like when it's clearly predatory that there's a sort of system, that there's a button under the desk, that there's a pattern going on, that that could have been going on while you were working with this person. How do you how do you go through that? I, I don't understand how, like you feel like you know the person, you've built up this relationship, you've built up a trust. And so that's got to be difficult on top of obviously the, the far worse experience of the people who are victimized by these people. And um, and then finally, uh, you know, Andy Cohen had asked uh, Katie Couric uh, back in 2012, what's uh, Lara's most annoying habit because they worked together for a long time. And uh, I, Katie Couric is not the person I'm referring to. Ann Curry uh, was the one who said that Lara had kind of pushed mm -hmm. her out and ran a boys club. But Katie uh, Couric, uh, said about his most annoying habit, quote, he pinches me on the ass a lot. Now, if he's doing that to Katie Kirk, who's super powerful, uh, who was his co-anchor, I maybe we shouldn't be overly surprised by what he was doing to non-powerful women. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I mean, everybody, everybody in every co uh, office is having conversations about what's acceptable based on how you know people. There are people who feel like they're very close friends with their coworkers, and so maybe some things are more appropriate. At a certain point, though, some things like when you are literally pinching a person's ass, that's hard to imagine how that can feel justified. If you become a member of the Young Turks, you'll be saying, "You know, I'm like a smart person." So do it right now. Tytnetwork.com/slash/join. Get the whole Young Turks show every day.